Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. Uh, my name is Phoenix and actually today I have a new guest with me <laughs> that isn't Kenzie or Koda, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, this is Minho, my uh, my new friend from Animazement. Hi guys. Yeah, he's he is friends with my boy. So uh, there is a connection there, but uh, he has agreed to let me use him for views. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, after some consideration of what the fuck to read, uh, we have stumbled upon this Stardew Valley uh, book. Uh, it is listed mature. I don't know how mature it gets. So there is your warning <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Is there BL in this one? I have no- I think it's- It's a Harvey X reader, and I'm thinking the reader is female, so it is straight. <laughs> mm. Let me read the synopsis. Yeah. Uh, after moving to Pelican Town to escape your corporate job and urban lifestyle, you end up with a nasty injury, which forces you to the doctor's office, where you meet the charming but mysterious Dr. Harvey. Will romance blossom between the both of you, or will you fall at the first hurdle? I'm I'm guessing it's female. I don't know how mature it gets. I don't know if there's any like smut or lemons or anything like that. So don't give me flack. All right, he was fine with being mature. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's no BL tag here. I'm looking at all the tags. Oh damn but it! There is a romance mature. Uh, oh, Stardew. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's BO. Yeah. Oh, it says Maybe there's a. We'll get yeah, the tag wholesome and slow burn really make me hopeful. But it's just weird to see mature listed as well. <laughs> if it's a slow burner. It's a wholesome, mature, slow burner. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird ass combination right there. <laughs> All right, this one's called Love is the Best Medicine. I'm not even going to try pronouncing the author's <laughs> name because I suck at that shit. <laughs> Where's the author? Uh, I, uh, Gazelle Images. Oh, Gazelle, oh, Gazelle that... Imagines. Gazelle Imagines. Oh my... <laughs> I can't fucking read. You got it, you got it. <laughs> oh, you should see when I do these recordings at Coda. I'm like trying to pronounce a word and then Coda's in the corner like, No, no, you got it! It's the, you're, <laughs> you're gonna get it! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't! <laughs> Alright, oh yeah, um... So, for these, if there's an X reader and they say YN, usually what we do is replace the YN with a random name that sounds corny and stupid. So what would you like the the reader's name to be in the, in the story? Hmm. Uh, let me see. I'm so bad at names. You, Dude. you should just that to me. Dude, it literally can be anything. The last time we did this, we named the girl Shotgun. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it has to be like a girl name. Then? No, it does. Well, I think it's a, I think it's a girl, but like, what do we we name these characters stupid names all the time? So it doesn't have to be taken seriously. <laughs> uh, Bill. Oh, perfect. All right, and just in case it says first name, I'll put Bill again. All right. Yeah, I have the POV replacer on my <laughs> on my computer. Bill's a girl name, right? What, Bill? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not that weird person that moves into the town that has the name Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, uh, I don't know who will end to start, but we could always flip my remote to see who goes first. Flip your remote? What yeah. do you do with that? Oh, I just flip it and whatever side it lands on gets to go. So, do you want to be the buttons or the backside? Hmm. All right. Let me do some physics calculations on this remote. So, probabilistic, uh, statistically, that remote will probably go on the button side, right? All right. So, so your buttons then? Yes, on buttons. All right, and then I'll be backside. All right. It's buttons. <laughs> <laughs> so, am I reading first or are you? Yeah, you read first since you lost. Okay. You got All right. Let me click this. Chapter one. A new beginning. Alright. Mm -hmm. You had always dreamed of living a simpler life away from the fast-paced hustle and bustle of the city. After years of feeling trapped in your corporate job with the constant stress of urban living, 
You finally decided to take the leap and move to a small town in the countryside. As you packed your bags and said goodbye to your apartment, you felt a sense of relief wash over yourself. The constant noise and chaos of the city had taken a toll on your mental health significantly, and you were more than ready for a change. It's relatable. Same. You hopelessly stood out the train window as you watched the city skyline vanish from your horizon, your reflection upon the glass. You knew today would change your life forevermore. Today was the day you left your life behind and instead pursued a more quiet life as a small town farmer. This stop is Pelican Town. The robotic train now. So, oh, it's robotic. This stop is Pelican Town. The robotic train announcer <laughs> spoke over the speakers. <laughs> it was time for you to disembark with no more than a suitcase of clothes and a small range of personal items from your old flat. Feelings of disruption washed over you, knowing that your grandpa had been far too old and weak to maintain the farm of himself over the span of the past few years. This would not be an easy task or job to start with little experience. As you lugged your suitcase off of the train carriage and onto the small station platform, you saw a woman and an older looking man wearing a cap waiting for you. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Robin, the local carpenter. Oh, there's a female voice. <clears throat> Alright, you gotta put on your best female voice. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Robin, the local carpenter. She greeted. Robin's voice is friendly and warm. I, I wouldn't describe it as friendly and warm. As she greets you and you feel welcomed by her open demeanor, you instantly note her inviting, friendly smile. Her clothes are worn but functional with a leather apron over a plain shirt and jeans. She seems, she seems to have a few cuts littered over her hands and arms clearly from her practical labor job. Hello, I am Mayor Lewis, the other man greeted. Mayor Lewis spoke, speaks with a warm and welcoming voice. You notice that his suit is well tailored, but slightly worn, as if it's been, it's seen many years of use. Despite his friendly nature, there's a sense of authority and responsibility about Mayor Lewis. He's the leader of the town, and it shows in the way he carries himself. He's clearly used to making important decisions and taking charge when necessary. Slightly bewildered, you nodded and greeted the back. They both led you to your new farmhouse, whilst discussing Pelican Town and your late grandfather, who had left you in the farm in his will. Uh, Mayor Lewis continued to brief you on what life was like in Pelican Town, telling you about the local shops, the people, and the events that took place throughout the year. You listened intently at first, fascinated by the details you shared. However, as the conversation wore on, his words began to blur together and his explanations turned into ramblings. You tried to stay focused, but your mind wandered to the possibilities of your new life in the valley. Robin and Mary Lewis decided to leave you to your vices. You scanned through the box Lewis had handed you as you, you, oh, typo, you arrived. He left you some tools such as a hoe, an axe, and also left 20 packs of parsnip seeds to help kickstart your farm. Additionally, he left a red notebook with what he called valuable information scribbled inside the many pages. <laughs> this was ever so strange to you. You were only ever used to the city air and the hustle and bustle of the city itself. Your favorite thing to do was to go shopping in all the expensive high streets and treat yourself to the occasional new clothing item, but that lifestyle was far removed. You traded in your designer clothes for basic t-shirts and overalls that were soon going to be covered in dirty soil. I'm just like, <laughs> this is this is bad, but like, I'm just like, um, you know how Canada has that fire right now, so with all that smoke and shit's coming from us and uh -huh. yeah i'm picturing that's what her like she opens up the window in her city and it's just fucking orange outside she's like yep <laughs> this city i love this place. <laughs> you just downgraded her whole lifestyle she's I'm, like i love it yeah honestly like moving to like here especially from like new like new york and everything that's probably the best option that she had to like <laughs> actually have clean air <laughs> <laughs> probably more breathable yeah W would you like right. me to start reading? <laughs> you, you read a lot, dude. Oh, did I? Yeah, you read like Wait, half of this. The whole chapter, or was I supposed to like? We, we, uh, we usually popcorn read, but <laughs> I, I was like, you're in a oh, mood right shoot. now. Oh shoot! Okay, I just scrolled through the whole thing. That was a lot. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you want, I can I can start reading now. All right, go ahead. Go All ahead. Right. I will take a quick drinking break. Alright, it's not gonna be as good as, as your, like, reading skills, but I will try my damn hardest. <laughs> <laughs> All good. 
The farm before you was a mess. The amount of work required to turn this land into a prosperous farm seemed daunting. Weeds and rocks covered the land, and there were broken fences and abandoned structures scattered throughout. You had your work cut out for you, but you were determined to make this place your own. We're about to fucking customize this farm. It's gonna look like uh, when people are like, like year five. This is what my farm looks like, and it's like beautiful. <laughs> You set to work, slowly clearing a small area in front of your house to till the, the first soil. You started by clearing the weeds and rocks from the ground at the front of your farmhouse. As you began to, the daunting task of clearing the weeds, you found some of them were deep-rooted in, in new, and would require a lot more effort to remove. But you were persistent, hacking away at them with your hoe and pulling them up by their roots. Slowly but surely, the land started to look more manageable. It was hard work, but with each patch of cleared land, you felt a sense of accomplishment. Your arms weren't used to the weight of the axe and therefore shook every time you tried to swing one at a tree. You additionally removed some small boulders too in the progress in the process. By the time you had cleared the area to still, you could barely stand. Man, we got exhausted real fast. <laughs> That's that day one energy. <laughs> <laughs> this work was going to be a lot harder than you originally thought. And that reality scared you somewhat. Grabbing the seed packs, you carefully sowed them into the soil. Once you had finished, you watered the seeds, ensuring that they would they would all wait, ensuring they <laughs> had all they needed to grow. You weren't a hundred percent certain you were doing everything right, but time would only tell from here on out. You were certain you would learn and pick skills up as you went. Finally, you sowed the last seed. Stepping back and admiring your work, the sun was starting to set, and you finally finished clearing the last patch. Well, that's a damn pretty good start, if you ask me. You mumbled to yourself, wiping beads of sweat off your forehead. Your plan was to explore the village, and to, but it has to be pulled off until tomorrow. As all you can think about in the moment was getting some well-needed sleep. You collapsed on the ground, exhausted but happy. As you lay there looking at the stars, you, I thought we should have just died <laughs> from exhaustion <laughs> for a second. You like, know, actually, when I started Stardew, like, I didn't know the concept of exhaustion, so I just kept dying, and I didn't know why. I was like, what's wrong with this game? <laughs> I'm just working and dying. And I'm like, oh, it's, there's, like, stamina. Yeah. <laughs> just straight up dying every time. <laughs> <laughs> I just accepted it. <laughs> As you lay there looking at the stars, you couldn't help but feel a sense of peace. You always had dreamed of living a simple life, away from the hustle and bustle of the city, and now you've finally found the chance to pursue that. Stringing out your dirty clothes and into some more comfortable PJs, you open your red notebook from the mayor. Scrolling down to the pages were things of all the 28 town's members that you had to greet at some point within the week. This seemed like it would be a harder job than planting your first seeds, but you knew it would be done eventually anyway. You scanned the list. You mumbled the name of some of the town's folks to yourself in the process. Sh I fucking hate Shane. This is a side note. I fucking hate Shane so much. I don't really like Shane either. This is a fucking. This is a Shane hate club right now. <laughs> Shane's the fucking worst. Anyway. <laughs> Abigail, Pam, Sebastian. You reached the bottom of the list. Dr. Ridley. I don't remember a fucking guy named Dr. Ridley. <laughs> You had previously wondered how such a small town gets their medical treatment, as any major hospital was miles away. However, this thing seemed to answer the question for you. I'll start tomorrow. I'll have to greet everyone by the end of the day. Alright, we did it! First chapter done! I love me a good slow burner. <laughs> Alright, you want me to read now? Yeah, you go ahead. Alright. Chapter 2. Will you be my friend? You woke early. Uh, you woke early in the morning. You glanced over at the clock. Yep, it was 6 a.m. The alarm clock blares, signaling the start of a new day. You groan and reach for the snooze button, desperately trying to squeeze in just a few more minutes of sleep. But as the minutes tick by, you know you can't delay any longer. Ru reluctantly, you dragged yourself out of bed and stumbled towards the bathroom. Your eyes felt heavy and your body ached with fatigue from the previous day's labor. As you splashed the cold water on your face, you knew that you could not give in to the urge to same day. You have responsibilities that need to be met, even if it feels like the last thing you want to do on your second day in the valley. Relaxing was currently not an option. 
You showered and dressed. You quickly scanned over your notebook again. You had no idea what these townsfolks even looked like. Oh, this person's more motivated than me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you opened your front door, letting your new little pooch, Milo, out for fresh air. He ran straight out in front of you, all whilst wagging his tail at high speeds and sniffing the crisp spring air that had laid a delicate mount of dew on the grass. We have a dog? <laughs> when did that get established? Is it Milo or Milo? I think it's Milo. Milo? Alright, yeah. I'll say Milo. When the fuck did we get a dog, be... though? <laughs> that didn't no happen. Idea. It didn't even... I... I don't think it was mentioned, but I guess we do now. Yeah, I... he just appeared. He would spawned in. <laughs> <laughs> The scent of blooming flowers was carried towards you by a gentle breeze that graced your nose. The bird song filled the air around you, a sweet symphony of chirps and tweets as the feathers, uh, the, as the fe feathered creatures flew gracefully from tree to tree. You noticed that the trees surrounding the farm were beginning to bud with new blossoms, with fresh green leaves and pink gentle petals unfurling from their winter slumber. As the early morning unfolded, you found your mind wandering. I think that's supposed to be wandering. Wandering to the work that was needed to be done. The chores that were needing completion and the endless tasks that had needed to be tackled before the sun disappeared beyond the horizon for the day. But for now, in this moment, you simply basked in the beauty and serenity of a spring morning in the country for the first time. You checked over your newly growing produce and were pleased to see that they had sprouted their first shoots. Grabbing the silver watering can, where you filled it in the small pond next to your crops and set to work. After you had finished watering the tiny sprouts, you headed inside to wash your hands and spray a few splashes of perfume on your neck and wrists. You wanted to make a good impression on the town folks, regardless of whether or not being muddy and somewhat filthy was in your job description. You decided to swap your mud-covered boots for sandals that matched perfectly with your floral dress that matched the spring air. You also needed to buy yourself some more seeds from the general store that Mayor Lewis had mentioned. Alright, I'll popcorn you here. Alrighty. You followed a, a cobbled path to the town center. You spotted a couple friendly faces conversing with one another, and some were just going about their day. You spotted a woman with a... a, a what? <laughs> with a plant in her hair holding a little boy's hand. A what young, is a plant? I'm looking this up. I've, ne I've never plant heard that word before. <laughs> in hair. Holding a little boy's uh, hand. Oh, it's like a braid. Uh, why did they just fucking say that? <laughs> They're fancy. Okay. <laughs> They're fancy enough to use that, but they can't spell, like, use the right wandering and wandering <laughs> word. <laughs> a young looking guy with a dark dyed hair scrolling his way across town, and finally Mayor Lewis observed the square. Good morning. Who the f. Ev I can't even begin to pronounce this name. Is this our name? Evangeline. Evangeline. Wait a minute. This can't be our name. Is this an X? Yeah, this is an X reader. Why did they give us a name? That's it. I'm changing it to Bill. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell the name again? <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture that way. I can change it on my uh my thing. <laughs> Cause I cannot pronounce that the whole time I read this. All right. Is there a way you can like replace it? Yeah, there's an extension on Chrome for Wattpad. It's called a POV replacer, so you can fill in like replace this word with this. That way, when you read uh. the story, it'll fill in. So, <laughs> yeah, now it says "Good morning, Bill." <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Good morning, Bill. How's the farm? He asked, smiling at you as you approach. The farm is good, thank you, Mayor. You replied. That's good to hear. Have you met everyone yet? Uh, no, not yet. Well, there's a couple of townsfolks over there. You should try and introduce yourself. There is nothing to be afraid of. They're all very lovely. He beamed confidently, slightly overwhelming you. Okay, I'll give it a go, you muttered, your nerves taking over. You walked over to the mother, your hands trembling with nerves. You were always an overly anxious person. Wow, you don't have to fucking call me out like that. I'm just trying to read. <laughs> You had just learned to suppress it in the city. You were always glammed up in designer clothes looking somewhat important. But right here and now, you were dressed in a somewhat basic, somewhat dirty overalls with no makeup. Your hair tied up messily. You felt as if your presence no longer had the same effect. Instead, you were vulnerable and exposed. 
Hello there, you smile, trying to conceal your nerves. Oh, hello, you must be the new girl, she beamed back at you. I'm Jody, and this is my little boy, Vincent. She gestured at the boy and greeted you. Hi there, Vincent. Lovely to meet both of you. You beamed, your nerves slowly fading due to how comfortable you felt around them. It shocked you. Hi. <laughs> he shyly spoke. <laughs> oh, ignore him. He's just shy. Jody answered in response to Vince's nervous greeting. Jody looked slightly tired as if she was under pressure. She wore plain clothes and her pink top was slightly stained down at the front, which looked like a result of cooking. Oh, it's okay. I'm Bill, you replied, trying to make the little boy feel more relaxed at the new girl's presence. I love that we named her Bill. <laughs> I'm guessing we'll see you around, Bill? Jody spoke, smiling. Yes, we will. Lovely to meet you. All of a sudden, your nerves seemed to wash to wear off. You prayed that all the town's folks would be as nice as Jody's, but no. I'm sorry. Shane's not that nice. <laughs> no, he's not nice to anyone. Yeah. He's just an ass. I don't... I don't think Sebastian's that nice either. He's like, oh, okay, anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of nonchalant. Yeah. Okay, you decided to visit the buildings past the bridge where you met the the blacksmith Clint. Clint didn't seem open to the idea of a new townsfolk unless he could profit off of them in some way. Yeah, I'm the blacksmith. I have great tools and stuff. He spoke, an extreme <laughs> lackluster feeling in his words. Oh, okay. <laughs> he replied, not really knowing what to say in his tone. If you ever get free time, you should check out the mines. you find all sorts of ore down there. Sure. You noted this and carried about your day, trying to forget that awkward encounter. I don't like Clint either. <laughs> Like anyone, huh? I don't think Clint. I I like people. I like Elliot and Harvey, and I then like Milo. <laughs> yeah, our new dog Milo that just spawned. In. He's all I need. Yeah. Oh, Milo the best. Hashtag Milo. <laughs> Hashtag Milo. Through the day, you met a variety of people. Some kind, some not so much. Shame. Yet, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Shane. <laughs> you had ticked off all the nearby shop owners, such as Pierre. No one likes fucking Pierre. Pierre sucks ass. I, no, I have a feeling you just hate everyone. <laughs> no, there's some good. I love Marnie. Marnie's sweet, and I love her. <laughs> and even purchased some more seats for him. But you weren't. But you were yet to visit the clinic. Do you wanna? You wanna go ahead and finish off this chapter strong? Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Okay. <laughs> Alright, secretly, you hated the doctors. You had always hated hospitals with their cold clinical atmosphere and constant reminders of illness and injury. You ignored every doctor appointment, your excuse being that you were actually fine, but in reality you were terrified of the bright blue walls and the sanitized smell of hospital air. I can understand that, alright. Yeah. You blamed it on your anxiousness. Same. You tried to remind yourself that you were just here to cross off the last name on your list of townsfolk to meet. But it was hard to shake off the feeling of dread. You opened the doors to the clinic, and you were greeted by your awakening fears more than anything. A smiling nurse seemed to call you over to the front desk. Hey, you must be Bill, the new farmer, she beamed. Taken aback by her exaggerated greeting, you replied, It's lovely. <laughs> oh, my voice. I'm just going to read for you. Yeah. It's lovely to finally meet you. I've been so excited to meet you this whole time. It's so good that someone can properly use this beautiful valley's agricultural land after all those years. You are also taken aback by her scientific approach to her greeting. Well, yes, it would be a shame to not use it. Oh, how silly of me. I'm Maru, by the way. I would say my name, but it seems you already know it, you giggled. It's lovely to meet you, too. I take it you are looking for the doctor, Maru quizzed. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'll go grabbing for you. Okay, Maru. I heard the conversation. A tall man of glasses spoke. He studied him. Harvey's appearance was striking, with his neat hair, glasses, and lab coat giving him an air of professionalism and authority. His hair was styled to swoop across the side, a beautiful shade of brunette. He pushed his glasses up as they began to fall down his... Oh, he pushed his glasses up as they began to fall down his... <laughs> 
I'd be a little kinky on him. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely a geeky guy. Immediately, you thought he was attractive. Oh, there you go. And therefore, you found him strangely alluring. I'm Dr. Harvey. <laughs> Alright, hold on. Let me, let me get a better voice. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Harvey, the town doctor, he greeted, unaware of how effortlessly, effortlessly charming he was being. <laughs> it's it's a, a pleasure, you stuttered, your nerves finally beginning to appear with your stomach again. Does your last name happen to be Ridley? You questioned, remembering the list in the book. No, that was the previous doctor that ran the clinic. He retired years ago, Harvey added. Clearly, Mary Lewis hadn't updated that notebook in years. Please drop by my clinic any time you feel unwell. It's my duty, after all. Harvey's warm demeanor was immediately apparent when you first met him. He had a gentle voice and a calling presence, which seemed to make him a favorite among the townspeople. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. It's fine. It's my job, miss. But it doesn't have to be just a job, your intrusive thoughts said to me. Ah, yes, of course, you mumbled, snapping out of your illicit thoughts. Oh, accidentally run in his voice. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be seeing you again. It's a small town, after all. He spoke, smiling in an effortlessly attractive manner. Yes, you too, Dr. Harvey. You trekked home. It was past 8 p.m. Damn, our front door. <laughs> Damn, is it, Bill is like down bad. He, he, she literally just met this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep feeling weird calling her Bill now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you chose the name, bro. I, I did. Yeah, that was, that was all, like said, all you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, we named the last girl Shotgun, so it would have been fine with anything. <laughs> <laughs> you trekked home. It was way past 8 p.m. You unlocked your front door and crashed onto your bed. This farm life was shattering on your body. Tomorrow you knew you would have to be cut some more of the overgrown weeds and trees down to make more space for crops. However, you couldn't stop thinking of Dr. Harvey. Despite the brevity of the first interaction you had together, you felt the connection with Harvey that you couldn't quite explain. You knew that you had to get to know him better somehow. But how? Ooh, shit. Romance! <laughs> it's coming. I, I did marry Harvey on my second run of, of Stardew Valley. My first one was Elliot. <laughs> I think my first run was Abigail. Oh, you're a fucking Abigail fan? Same. <laughs> Wait, let me look her up just to make sure. How yeah, she's the girl with the purple hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Think. Damn, I can't believe you fell for the emo-looking girl. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go for a real emo guy like like Sebastian? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Sebastian. Or <sighs> Shane. Well, yeah, no one likes fucking Shane. Unless, uh, uh, um, no, actually, correction. No one likes Shane except for those girls that are like, but I can fix him. Like, has, like, a god complex. <laughs> I feel like Abigail might get along with Shane. They'll just have a rain cloud that's constantly above them all the time. Oh, my God, you're right. <laughs> all right, chapter three. How deep does it go? I hope we're talking about the mines. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to that fast. I hope so. I was promised a slow burn, wholesome, mature flick, alright? I want that. <laughs> <laughs> alright. Spring 17, year one. I woke up again, somehow becoming somewhat accustomed to the new adapting 6am routine. It's been a few weeks since you moved to Pelican Town. You had learned and remembered nearly everyone's names. And you had made your first profit on your produce. You expanded your actual crop area, and now it could hold 60 crops instead of just 20. You had just received a letter from the CVT congratulating you on your quick progress on the farm. Who the fuck is the C... the SVT? I forgot who that is in the <laughs> Stardew Valley. SVT, let me look that up. Stardew... Uh, SVT. What is that? Who is this SVT? That's the first thing that's... Nice. We're <laughs> just a local newspaper. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> you looked outside and it was raining. No, not just raining, pouring. Your crops didn't need watering today, and part of you felt relieved knowing that you could relax. However, you didn't want to at the time. Clint mentioned the mines to you that 
at the far right of town. You glance at your pickaxe and sword. Oh god, this is gonna be stupid, but hey, why not? You sighed, looking down at Milo, leading, leading you- wait. Led by you at the the fuck, hold on. <laughs> you sighed, looking down at Milo, led by you on the sofa. I don't even know if that's grammatically correct. I, that hurt my like brain. <laughs> yeah. The rain hammered down relentlessly, pelting against your skin with cold, heavy drops. You tried to, to dodge the raindrops, huddling underneath trees as you passed them, but it was no use. Before long, you were soaked through the bone. You're, you didn't fucking pack an umbrella? <laughs> 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 fucking idiot. <laughs> Man, Bill's a dumbass. <laughs> Uh, before long, you were soaked to the bone, your clothes clinging to your skin, and your hair plastered to yeah, plastered to your head. It felt vile, like your body was in some sort of shock. You shivered. The rain was soaking, and it's it's icy wet into your skin. Wait, it's yeah. I guess that's right. <laughs> it doesn't feel right to say that. <laughs> Finally, you saw the opening to the mines. You rushed to the shelter and sigh, panting as you reached the first ladder. As you venture down to the mines for the first time, you felt a sense of what the fuck does that say? Tri Trepidation. Thank you. <laughs> Trepidation. I have no idea what it means. Though. Me either. A fear of getting, or a fear, a feeling of fear or agitation about something that may happen. Okay, so it's just anxiousness. <laughs> Why did they just put that? I didn't. Maybe they thought they were using the word anxious too much. Maybe. <laughs> Well, usually when they use the word anxious, they're making fun of us. <laughs> they're like, I know what my readers are. Anxious little bitches. <laughs> uh, the darkness was op oppressive. You were armed with a pickaxe and sword, ready to face whatever dangers may lay lie ahead. Climb down as you met with the small cave that had some rocks and what looked like copper ore in it. You marched over confidently and tried to break the stone apart. After 20 minutes, you finally broke your first ore. 20 minutes? Well, I guess... I guess time of Stardew Valley is very different. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, claiming the copper is your own. A feeling of pride washed over you, and you're finally being brave enough to branch out and explore a little, the little perks of the valley, such as the mines. The first few levels of the mines were reluctantly easy to navigate, with small groups of rocks and gemstones scattered throughout. But you heard that the deeper one ascends, the danger level increases each layer, eventually forcing you to confront creatures such as slimes, bats, and other monstrous creatures. You didn't want to become overconfident in your ability to swing a small yet heavy sword. As you reached the third level, you spotted a green slime-looking creature in the cavern. You were certain that you could just avoid it by not getting too close, but unaware that at the time, slimes have, been, have the ability to jump and ambush you when they are in a pack. We got fucking slimed. I can fucking see it now. Oh god. <laughs> and I don't like the word slime now that it's, I say it out loud. Slime is like a... It's a slimy word, slime is. Dude, that <laughs> that sounds like it comes from like a hentai. <laughs> Just saying like she got slimed. <laughs> <laughs> you stood over to the next orc, copper gleaming through the torchlight. Suddenly the air grew cold and the sounds of creatures scurrying and... And slithering in the darkness became more pro oh, pronounced. You were on high alert, scanning your area for any signs of danger. But that's when it happened. Several green and blue slimes ambushed you at once, pouncing on you from behind. We fucking died in the oh, mines. God. It's a hentai. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. Hopefully, it doesn't like. Oh God, maybe that's why the list immature is that we get like that happens to us, and then we wake up at Harvey's. <laughs> Yeah, what a great, wholesome, slow burn, mature flick. Yeah, I thought this was really this was tagged as wholesome. Oh god, where the fuck did- Oh yeah, you tried to fight them off, but you hadn't managed to push your now fragile body to the rocky floor. When you first saw the slime by itself, you never thought for a second that there would be several trying to kill you, seemingly out of nowhere. How- How were they to know? Oh, how were you to know? As these monsters closed in around you, you started to realize that you might have pushed yourself too far on your first mind trip. That's what happened to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to let your ambition and determination get the best of you, and now you're paying the price of that gamble. Ooh. Oh, we're gonna fucking die. <laughs> the, we're dead. Yeah. 
Think it fast, you cast your sword and manage to fight back, knocking the slime off of your limb body. Using adrenaline, you manage to stand and swing your sword back, killing at least two of the slimes. You had found the best way to deal with the slimes was to keep moving, dodging their attacks, and striking back with quick, precise blows. As you fought, you started to develop a sense of rhythm, anticipating their movements and responding with calculated strikes. You had successfully fought them to the death, eventually killing the last one with a huge relief. You had, ooh, <laughs> you had saved yourself from certain danger. Or had you? Just fucking mm. dies anyway. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're just at this point, we're just like, just die already. Yeah, we're like, oh shit, we you, we swung our swords too many times and now we're exhausted and we just pass out. <laughs> <laughs> the adrenaline had carried you for the entire day of the fight and you had just endured. Noticing you quickly jumped to the to the next chapel. We went further down? Are we stupid? Oh my god. We're like, oh, we we overestimated on our first trip. We are gonna die. And then we're like, alright, let's go down one more <laughs> Oh god, we're Bill's stupid as shit. No wonder why she fucking dies. <laughs> oh, okay, no, seeing You jumped to the next chapel, which was empty. A single torch in your hand illuminated the bare cavern. You slumped down on the floor, out of breath and bleeding from your head, and like, oh god, we have a concussion. <laughs> oh god. You notice a huge gash in your left leg, the pain slowly settling in as the adrenaline wore off. You shiver, your clothes still wet from the outside rain. You felt your eyes grow heavy, your body lump, and before you had a chance to even try and fight for your safety once more, you passed out. You were now extremely vulnerable, damp and cold, and now losing blood from your leg. <laughs> Holy shit, this got dark. <laughs> okay, then. Maybe that's why it's, uh, tag doesn't mature. Hopefully. I'm I'm really hoping there is no, s like... <laughs> like... <laughs> no slime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's going to be the new word. Instead of saying sex, we're going to say slime <laughs> instead. <laughs> Hopefully don't get slimed in this chapter. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to... Here, I can read from here. Alrighty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a drink real quick. Alrighty. I'm gonna drink the rest of this fucking Gatorade that I have from upstairs from three days ago. <laughs> mm, sponsored by Gatorade Fit. Uh, tangerine Orange. Purify your heart? What is this for? <laughs> uh, I can't even read that word. Uh, it's got vitamins. Hatchet not sponsored. <laughs> yeah, like fucking Gatorade would ever want to sponsor a channel that reads fan fiction. <laughs> right. Oh, as a side note, that Gatorade drink, uh, uh -huh. it's tangerine orange, but on the nutrition thing right above it, it says it contains 4% watermelon juice. <laughs> Why the fuck does it need watermelon juice? It's fucking orange. 4%? <laughs> yeah. 4% water? That's actually relatively high for something labeled orange yeah yeah why is it need watermelon juice it's 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 the flavor is tangerine orange why not add watermelon juice no that's a fair point <laughs> i never <laughs> thought about it like that why don't we just add watermelon juice to everything yeah add it to the orange juice add it to the apple juice add it yeah, to the, the watermelon milk, juice the water. <laughs> not the milk <laughs> that's just might as well put it in our water yeah but <laughs> water watermelon water oh my god water, just water. add it to all water. the lakes and like the underground water sources and wells just add a little oh, bit yeah. of watermelon juice watermelon supremacy <laughs> yeah all right where are we dark oh darkness right yeah okay darkness you felt as if you were no longer in your body it was strange you begun you begun to regain your senses there was a sharp ringing in your ears you felt groggy and disoriented, matched with a pounding headache and a sense of shame and embarrassment. You couldn't believe that you let yourself get into such a dangerous situation without evaluating the possibility of getting injured, vowing to yourself to be more careful and mindful in the future. You take a deep, I mean, if you have a future, you take a deep breath trying to calm your racing heart and look around the room. It's small and clean with a few medical tools and supplies scattered around. You realize that you must have been brought here by someone who had found you unconscious. Have I died finally? You murmured slowly, opening your eyes surrounded by bright lights. Me. <laughs> and this, who? What the hell is this? We, we have a canon last name? That's no good. We gotta change this shit. Miss Rosingdale? 
I guess. All right, what are we changing that to? <laughs> Uh, hmm. Bill, what's a good last name for Bill as a female? <laughs> I don't think any last name can really make up for your first name here. But... Dude, we can do Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls. <laughs> okay, Bill Cipher. Miss Cipher, thank goodness you are awake, a familiar voice exclaimed. It was modern. I'll go get the doctor right now. He's been so worried. Maru quickly dashed out the roof, leaving you alone to study your injuries. You looked down at your leg, a thick bandage around your calf. Oh no, you were in serious trouble when you knew it. You tried to move your leg to express that you were fine, but as soon as you did try, you let out a scream of pain. Ah! <laughs> your leg was in agony and your head was pounding. Miss Cypher, don't you dare thinking about moving. De oh, don't you dare think about moving, another familiar voice explained. Dr. Harvey rushed to your aid alone. Sighing as he monitored your vitals. Oh my god, it's Dr. Harvey. Oh shit. <laughs> Let's Why go. He's, here? Well, He's always here. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, what the hell were you thinking? He exclaimed, clearly angry at you, but also concerned and compassionate. The first name basis he had switched to rather suddenly only pinpointed his concern further. Clint said that the mines had all sorts of cool stuff. I'll try to read it now. <clears throat> Clint said all the mines had all sorts of cool stuff to find, he mumbled, slightly embarrassed. Not only were you badly hurt, you were soaking wet. Any longer and you would have contracted a severe case of hypothermia. It's not that bad, Doc. Look, I was okay, you mentioned as you tried to sit up. However, finding yourself hissing at your pain once more. Don't you dare try and move. It's best you rest, he sighed. You were alone, vulnerable, soaking wet, and so badly injured that you were losing a sufficient amount of blood to kill you, Miss Cypher. You don't seem to understand how serious this is. You could have died. Died? Your body shivered at the thought of shaking hands with death, knowing that you had merely missed that horrific fate due to the luck of kind luck and kindness of the townsfolk around you, including the doctor. Yes, died. I stitched your wound together. You'll be fine after some rest. You had an abrasion on your head, however, so you may have a minor concussion for next falling days. Oh, yeah, you were right. Concussion. Oh, shit, we did hit the wall. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Brain damage. Yeah. We all gotta have it. Yeah, definitely Bill Cipher over here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you mother guilt-washing your cheeks, friend. Who found me, you questioned. Robin. She was merely collecting wood from the forest when she noticed a lit torch illuminating the entrance to the mines. She called Marlin, who managed to rescue you and bring you to me at the clinic. If you were any further down in the mines, you may have been unreachable. The reality of how lucky you were began to set in, and you felt a sharp lump in your throat begin to rise. You may have been stupid to venture into those mines unaware of the dangers before you, but you are not to blame. You were not to know. Harvey sighed, knowing, or somewhat realizing that you must have been terrified beyond belief hearing about your state before your miraculous rescue. Alright, you can read. Alright. Oh, hell yeah, I get to fucking read for Dr. Harvey? Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Sighing, you turned away from Harvey. You and the doctor were alone in the hospital ward. The only other sound being the beeping of the machines monitoring your, vitals, your vital signs. Your injuries could have been a lot more serious if they have gone untreated. A point only interfered by the doctor's reoccurring worry. Your mind wandered in a different universe and a different life. You might have already been a lost soul floating through the halls of the endless cycle of rebirth. What the f- Where did this come from? Uh, <laughs> this is weird as shit, anyway. <laughs> maybe we, maybe we still have that concussion. Yeah, we have that concussion still, so maybe it's that. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Harvey oh yeah shit you glanced up a worried yet blank look on your face your mind foggy Dr. Harvey began to check your pulse and blood pressure which you lay si silent asking you questions about your medical history you answered as best as you could from your bare recollection still feeling dizzy oh days my fucking man <laughs> <laughs> <Same thing. laughs> he nods softly making notes on the clipboard before turning back to you and continuing to examine you as he, as he does so, you couldn't help but notice how attractive he truly is. <laughs> Smash. <laughs> <laughs> you always found him to be charming and friendly, and now that he's up close, 
Oh, he's up. Yeah, he's up close. You can see the the gentle lines of his face and the twinkle in his eyes as he proves the passion he holds for his job and the passion of helping people. He's kind and caring with a warm, beside manner that immediately puts you at ease. He, as he finishes the exam, you find yourself stealing glances at him, admiring the way that he moves and speaks. You feel a flutter in your chest and sense of attraction that caught, that catches you off guard. It's not just his his looks, you think to yourself. Although, <laughs> although he is certainly handsome. <laughs> and instead, it's the way that he cares for you. Well, no sh- shades are fucking doctor. <laughs> The way he listens and responds with a genuine concern, even if it is his job after all. He proves himself to be intelligent and knowledgeable within the depths of experience and understanding his patients, which is rare to find in a city doctor. I guess we have shitty doctors that like this one is like a- Shitty doctors don't care about you. Yeah. You try to shake out the feeling, reminding yourself that he's a doctor and you are no more than his patient. As he turns back to you, offering a reassuring smile to help put your worry expression at ease, you couldn't help but feel the the twinge of something more (laughs) re-emerging. You search for answers. Perhaps it's just vulnerability from being in a hospital bed, or the adrenaline from the recent scare in the mines that is making you feel this way, or even maybe... Or your recent head injury causing these strange delusions. Maybe no, at that. I, I'm my money's on the, the concussion. <laughs> you lifted your arms slightly at the, to touch your scalp, kneading your hands through your hair. Don't worry, your hair is fine. He spoke thick and low. You sighed in relief as, the bold patch would have not, been a good look for a newcomer in the valley. <laughs> You just show up fucking bald, like half our hair's missing. <laughs> Miss Cypher, never ever do that again. God knows what will happen next time. Please don't take that risk. I am requesting this as your doctor and friend. You nodded, a consuming feeling of guilt washing over you as you study Harvey's stressed face and body language. I'm sorry for coming across angry. I was just very worried. I think I'm going to send Harvey a letter telling him to stop encouraging people to enter this horf- horrific minds. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's why no one moves to this valley, because they all die in the mines. <laughs> I wonder what death is like. Is Because, like, in the game, you just wake up in your bed again, but what what happens? You just die forever in this? I get, well, we can ask our grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We just go over to his like little gravestone in the in the, uh, the farm. We're like, Grandpa, what what is it like to die? Like, <laughs> <laughs> as Doctor Harvey finishes his notes and prepares to leave you alone to recover and think, you find yourself wishing that he would stay just a bit longer, just so you could bask in his kind and comforting presence. Maybe you're mm-hmm. being a little delusional. Absolutely, but who truly knows? You question the idea of love at first sight as you never experienced something as mythical as that in your first in your lifetime. But now your ideas were changing, all by the presence of his of this adoring man. <laughs> oh, endearing, my bad. <laughs> Mixing up what my positive word. <laughs> you know that it's not a not appropriate to imagine, yet pursue a yeah, pers- yeah, whatever. <laughs> a romantic relationship with your doctor, but you couldn't help but, f- but the way you feel. Rest up, Miss Cipher. You'll stay here tonight so I can monitor you. Harvey speaks, preparing to leave, not meeting your eyes as he does. His tone is so wet monotone. As he exits the room, you couldn't help but feel a sense of longing and a, and a question mark hanging over your future interactions with him within your mind. He seemed very collected, but... St- but how long would it be until that facade broke? Would it break? You wait alone, the machine still beeping. Wearied eyes, you began to drift off into a slumber. Your eyes were wandering wa- Your Your mind was, yeah, wandering wild as you did, entertaining useless scenarios, and also hoping that Milo was keeping himself entertained back at the farmhouse. He's gonna starve! <laughs> No, 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 my life. No. All right, I think that's gonna do it. So, what'd you think? 
it's, it's exciting so far. She's definitely down bad for him. Yeah, bro just moved here. <laughs> it's been. <laughs> what is it like day three? I it said spring seventeen, so it's been seventeen days since she What's she that? moved. So, yeah. 17 days, she got a concussion and almost died, and then she's like, has the hots for Harvey, because she's had a near-death experience. I remember there was, like, this symptom during, like, World War where soldiers would fall in love with their nurses. What was this called? I don't know what it's called. No, that's what we have. Whatever it's called, that's that's what our, uh, our, our persona of Bill Cipher has. <laughs> okay, it's called Florence Nightingale. Syndrome, also known as caretaker syndrome. Alright, that's it. That's what Phil Bill Cipher is. Yes. Already, Understandable. Uh, yeah. You know what? I, I would too fall for Harvey if I was in the Star Valley universe. <laughs> but uh, if you guys would like to read this book ahead of us, uh, I will have a link down below. Uh, hopefully I can get Minho back and maybe we'll read more of this or maybe fucking a different book. Who fucking knows? This is the future only knows. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, my name is Phoenix. This is uh, Minho. And I guess we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>